Hi there, this is SJ Owen Science, and it looks like we're about wrapped up with talking about what all organisms do, the characteristics of all life. In this video, we'll talk about the eighth item on the list, the last item, that all organisms change and evolve. In the next video, we'll do a little recap of all the other items in this list. To evolve means to change over time. You can use this word in everyday conversation. You could say, my mood has evolved throughout the day because it's changed. Earlier I was very cheerful and then I became upset, but now I'm happy again. You could also say that the weather evolves over time. It changes. Yesterday it was sunny, today it's cloudy and rainy, and the weatherman predicts that tomorrow it will be sunny again. But biologists use the term evolve to mean that living things change over many, many, many generations or reproductive cycles. One generation is whenever a parent makes an offspring. If this happens many times, then living things can change because they accumulate mutations, as we talked a little bit about in the last video. Let's take a closer look at mutations. This block organism is ready to reproduce. When it does, it turns out that one of the offspring that it produces is identical to it. It is the same. It has no mutation. The other block organism, however, is a mutant. It is red, unlike the parent, which is blue. Let's see another generation. The blue and red block organisms reproduce as well. I will circle in blue all the organisms that are not mutants. This blue block organism over here is not a mutant because it's identical to its blue parent. And this red block organism is not a mutant because it's identical to its red parent. However, the magenta organism here and the yellow organism here are mutants as well. So why do we care about mutations, and how does it help organisms to evolve? There are a few different kinds of mutations. We can have helpful mutations, mutations that create traits that somehow help us. Let's say if an organism mutates to become stronger or faster. You can have harmful mutations, such as mutations that cause organisms to become weak or slow. You can also have silent mutations. Silent mutations don't really help or hurt anything. They don't really matter. Let's say that all of our block organisms are grazing in a forest because uh, they're herbivores, let's say. And then all of a sudden, a pack of vicious carnivorous pac-men come in and begin to feed on the block organisms. Unfortunately, the red, blue, and yellow block organisms fall prey to the vicious Pac-Men because they are highly visible to their eyes. Fortunate for the magenta block organism, Pac-Men are blind to the color magenta. Let's see what happens next after the magenta organism escapes. It reproduces. It makes offspring. Now if we were to count all of the different organisms that are here in this environment, we would see that they're all magenta the environment selected for the magenta mutation. We call this natural selection, and it's a central concept in the study of biology, that the environment can weed out the organisms that are less able to survive and reproduce. And it's only one component of the whole idea of evolution, which is what we've been talking about here. All living things change and evolve due to the interactions of mutations, the environment, and natural selection. So that's all that I have to talk about for this list of things that all organisms do. This is SJ Owen Science, and I hope that you take the time to check out the next video in which I recap on the different items that are in this list, as well as some of the terms in our terms list. Thanks for watching.